Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today I'll be doing a Q&A. I posted a photo on Instagram asking you guys to leave me questions and I got over 100. So I'm not going to be able to answer all of them, but I will try to answer quite a few of them. But I don't want to make this video like three hours long, so we'll see how we go. A lot of the questions that I got were about moving out because I've lived out of home for a month now. Actually, by the time you're watching this, it'll probably be like a month and a half or something. But I think I want to make like a reflection video because I feel like it would be really helpful. Also, I'm thinking of making a moving out series. If you guys want to see that, let me know because I feel like that would be really helpful. But anyway, one of the questions was, was it hard moving out money-wise, homesick-wise? So this will probably be something I talk about more if I do a series. But the hardest thing that I've found about moving out so far is homesickness. And I never expected to get homesick because one, I don't live that far away from my parents house where I live now it's like a half an hour drive so it's not that far but it's not like super super close but I've always been quite an independent person so I didn't think I'd get homesick and it's not necessarily homesick of like missing my family although I do like it's it's more of just like, I think it was more like overwhelmed with the amount of change because I also moved out in the first week of uni and it was just, I would never recommend anyone doing that. It was so difficult to do both at once. But yeah, I don't know if I would call it homesick. It was just like overwhelmed with the amount of change. Maybe it was just me, but like waking up in a house where your parents aren't there ever is really weird. Or like not having anyone to talk to while you eat your dinner is just really weird. Yeah, I don't know. It was just so such a weird thing and it was really difficult and I found that really difficult which I didn't expect to but that's probably like the hardest thing financially I kind of expected it to be like the way it is so I haven't found it that hard does your roommate know that you are a youtuber if so what does she think about it well guys I feel like I have so much to tell you but I actually don't have a roommate right now she actually her lease was ending and so she moved to a new place and so right now at least when I'm filming this my landlord is like looking for someone else to move in so right now I'm living in a house by myself which is actually kind of nice but I live with her for a month and um, um, she never knew that I did YouTube and I didn't really want to tell her either just because some people find it a bit weird and it was just like something you just don't bring up you know what I mean like it's just weird to be like oh and by the way I talk to a camera as my hobby just in case you were wondering like if you wake up one day and I'm just talking to myself I'm probably just filming a video like it's just weird so it just never really came up hi Rachel I love your videos my question for you is are you happy where you are now if you can change one thing what would it be and I'm definitely happy like I love my life I'm so blessed to live the life that I live if I could choose one thing in my life, okay, it would be either be like one of these two things. Either it would be one for me to be a full-time YouTuber and so I could kind of choose my hours and stuff because I feel like that would just make my life a lot easier, but that's very unrealistic. Or secondly, I wish I lived with someone that I knew. I wish I had a roommate that was like a friend of mine. Living with a random person is just very, very difficult, at least for me. I really struggle with like social anxiety, so I don't want to go too far into it, but I'm just very, very bad with meeting new people. And um, I don't think I realized how bad I was until I moved out and started uni. So, so yeah, if I could, I would love to live with like someone that I knew or like a friend or something. Samantha Wicks asked me my favorite memory from school. I have so many. When I first thought of this question, I was just thinking of the ones from grade 12, but now that I think about it, I have like so many from every year, but like the ones that spring to mind are like year 12 ones. And some of my favorite memories are going to get coffee on Wednesday mornings. I don't even drink coffee, but like I would just go for a ride. So like our friend Brad, he had a ute and we'd all like hop in his ute and we'd go down to like a local coffee shop and we'd get like a coffee or like hot drink, like a hot chocolate or something during winter. And we would get back like right as the bell went to go into class. And I don't know why I found it so fun, but like, but it was just a really fun group of people. And we just like mucked around and like I don't know it was just a really fun thing to do every Wednesday and we didn't do it for like the whole year it was only for like one term or something but it was just really fun one of my favorite memories that I have is going to our school production so like the play that our school ran because like half of our friend group was in it and then like half of our friend group wasn't in it so the other half went and watched the people who were in it and I've never felt more proud as a best friend than I did that night because my friends are so talented as actresses and actors and I was just like, wow, like these people are so great. And it just made me feel so thankful and so proud. And it was just such a happy night and everyone was just, 
I don't know. It was just so good. That was one of my favorite memories. These aren't like my top, top, top favorite memories. These are just ones that I can think of off the top of my head. But another one is going to Macca's for breakfast before school with Georgia. We do that like every now and then and we just get like hot cakes and hash browns and stuff and we just sit and eat breakfast together and it was just really fun. It was just a really good time. Millie asked me, what are the pros and cons of uni so far? I want to do the same course as you. Uni is very weird. <laughs> I don't know. So the pros of uni is definitely I feel like I have a lot more time than I used to and I'm studying things that will actually be relevant to my future career hopefully. <laughs> like I'm doing psychology classes because I want to be a psychologist or so kind of, I don't know, it's it's more interesting to study something that you know is actually relevant to your future rather than like doing English and Shakespeare and being like, when will I ever have to use this? You know what I mean? So that's like a really good pro, but the cons is just, I have made no friends. I literally have like two friends at uni and one of them is Georgia Woodford who I obviously knew before I went to uni and the other one is my friend Gabby who I also knew before I went to uni. It just happened that we went to the same uni and happened to be that we were in the same classes together but I've literally made no friends. That's another question that I got was like um have you made any friends? I have made no friends at uni. I've really realized like I said earlier how bad I am at meeting new people and how bad I am at making friends. It's just really difficult in uni. Some people say it's like so much easier than high school but I found it so much more difficult. I found so many things in uni more difficult than high school but my actual psychology classes I love them. I don't know how to say her name. Dima? I don't know if that's right. How did you study for bio and what do you do when you get disappointing marks? Love you. Well it's actually kind of interesting because last year when I was doing bio like I did it in all of senior but last year I I can't remember if it was second term or third term. I failed and before then I had never failed any exam or assignment before and I failed one of my exams in bio last year in term two or three because I just was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on that I just didn't have enough time to study for it. Like I didn't study as much as I wanted to and it really brought down my mark for the whole year and that sucked so bad because I could have done so much better if I hadn't have failed that one thing. It's really stupid how it all works out. But, but basically when I failed that, I think it was in term two. So I was talking to my teacher about it and she was basically like, look, it's good that it happened now in term two than for it to happen later in the year because now at least you can work your way back up. So I failed and I ended up coming sixth in my entire class, which was like uh, crazy to me. Like I did not expect for me to end up there. And although I failed that one exam, I ended up at the end of the year in the A range. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I do. I worked really hard. But I think the thing was because I failed, it made me want to work so much harder than if I hadn't have failed. Like if I was just cruising along doing well, I probably wouldn't have cared that much. But since I failed, I was like, no, I can do so much better than this. So I worked my butt off and I got an A minus, I think. Like I was so proud of myself for doing that. You guys might be like, oh well, an A minus, but like for me, that was a big deal, okay? In bio, like for me, in bio, A minus, like big deal. Miriam asked me, how do you get over someone you love but know they are not right for you? Ugh, this question. I have like so much to say about this question. I feel like I might have to do like some sort of series or something about boys or relationships. I have been in this situation before where I basically just wasn't treated very nicely by a boy and I'm not saying that he's not a nice guy, he was a very nice guy, but the way he treated me in that situation was not nice and so that thing, it wasn't even a relationship, that thing ended and I was so devastated. I was so sad and it took me so long to get over it and I remember being so frustrated with myself that I couldn't get over it and so mad at myself that I couldn't get over it but you have to realize that time does heal all wounds but it does take a little bit of patience but you have to also realize that if that relationship ended or if you broke up or whatever that was for a reason that was obviously because something wasn't working if you don't feel loved or if you don't feel supported or if you if they're just not a nice person to you then get out of there because you deserve someone who loves you and cherishes you and treats you like a princess and i remember thinking how will anyone else ever like me? And a lot of people think that in that situation because you forget that there's anything else in the world. And in my life, this was really funny because I remember thinking, how is anyone else ever going to like me? And how am I ever going to get over this? Am I never going to get over these feelings that I had for this boy? And a year later, I met my current boyfriend who is 100,000 billion times better than 
anything that that boy ever gave me. But at that time, I just thought that I would be miserable forever. You just have to remember that you never know what is just around the corner. Like the best thing of your life could be just around the corner and you won't know until you reach that. Like the boy that I'm dating right now, I didn't even know he existed at the time when I was so miserable. So of course I didn't think that I would be like this happy with this boy that I'm with now because I, I didn't even know he existed at the time. But that's the thing, you never know what is gonna happen this world is so unpredictable and you just kind of have to take each day as it comes and you have to realize that the best is definitely yet to come but just remember that time heals all wounds as well as ice cream and chocolate and best friends watching movies with you so just stay strong and you will get through it I promise Ash Jones asked me so far do you like high school or uni better I like high school 1,000 times more than uni like 1,000 times more at least for my high school my high school was like a community I had such a great group of friends I knew everyone and now I'm in uni I literally walk around like a lost puppy I have no friends the work is really difficult and I would much rather be back at high school I'm hoping it gets better I'm really hoping it does I don't like hate uni but I don't really love it and I love school Tegan asked me do you think it's a bad idea to get into a relationship in grade 12 I don't think it's a bad idea but I think it's something that you really have to consider and think through I think you really have to work as a team and you really have have to know where your priorities lie and although your priorities are with that person and of course that person is very important to you you also have to realize that year 12 is a big year and it's an important year and if you want to do the best you can you need to work hard so for like my boyfriend and I we would work really hard during the week so that we could hang out on the weekends but when it got to term three my boyfriend is like a really big nerd <laughs> he's okay he's not that big of a nerd but he's very very smart and very very intelligent and he really wanted to pretty much ate all of his subjects and I completely understood that and supported him in that we weren't dating at the time we were just kind of like seeing each other but we didn't hang out during all of term three because he was like no I need to focus on school because like term three was like the biggest term and I was like no that's fine and so that was eight weeks that I didn't get to see him out of school and we didn't really hang out at school either because we both have separate friend groups and that was important to us as well so I definitely think it can work out like my relationship has worked out and we were like seeing each other during grade 12 but you have to really work as a team and you have to communicate and you have to talk about how you're feeling and what's going on so that you can understand when you can't hang out and when you can hang out and things like that it's kind it can be hard but it can be worth it if you want it to be. But that is all of the questions I have to answer for today. I feel like that was such a long Q&A and I feel like I talked so much, so I'm sorry if it was a long one. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you want to be a part of my future Q&As, just follow me on Instagram. It's just rachelkatherine998 and you will get the updates on there. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already because that would make my day and I'll see you guys in my next video very soon. Goodbye.